What's up guys, if you've ever played Elden Ring or any FromSoft game, you know that something is waiting for you on the other side of one of these doors. In today's video, I'm going to teach you step by step how to create the materials, particle systems, and gameplay logic for an Elden Ring boss door. Let's jump in. Alright, so we're going to break up this content into five sections. First, we're going to create a smoky fog material for the door. We're going to create a smoky particle sprite for the base of the door. We're going to create a particle system that uses that smoke. We're going to assemble those parts in a blueprint, and then we will create the blueprint logic so that when the player overlaps the door, the door dissipates and the smoke disappears. Alright, let's jump in. So, in our content drawer, let's right click. We're going to create a new material. I'll call this M underscore boss door. I'll double click to open this up. And right off the bat, I'm going to select my material properties over here. I'm going to go to the blend mode. And I'm going to change this from opaque to translucent so that at the end it can be see through. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the color using a smoke. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to going to type texture object, not texture sample. You'll see why in a second. Over here under texture parameter, I'm going to search Perlin. We're going to use this Perlin noise underscore M. So click that. It's in the starter content. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a really cool material function. So if you guys aren't familiar with the panner, this is basically like the panner on steroids. What we're going to do to find it is if you notice that when you right click and type chaos, it's not there. We're going to use something called four-way chaos, which is like a four-way panner. I'm going to go up to the top level of my content drawer. So I'm going to click all up here, and then I'm going to type chaos uh, material function. could use one of these uh, filters down here, but I'm just going to type it over here. And we'll see this thing called four-way chaos. And if you can't double click into it, then what you're going to want to do is just duplicate it and create a copy of it. But and let's give it something like a suffix like MF, but I'm going to double click into this material function. You see that it pops up over here with this gameplay logic. It's going to have the output result selected by default. So I'm going to click out here into the graph and then I'm going to click on the left where it says material function exposed to library. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to save once I go back to my boss door when I right click and type chaos. We'll now see this motion four-way chaos under the complex motion. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to click it. And we notice here, uh, the reason we're using this texture object is because this takes only a texture 2D. If I were to try to add a texture sample and drag the RGB in, it says incompatible. So for that reason, we're going to use a texture 2D. Now up here, we're going to type a text. We're going to type texture coordinate. I'm going to hit return. This is how we're going to scale this fog if we want. So I'm going to drag off here and I'll say multiply. I'm going to drag off here and I'm going to type scalar parameter. It's going to give me the option to name it. I'm going to call this UV scale. And let's set this value right here under the default to 0.25. And I know that should be good for this texture object. So I'm going to drag this multiply result into the coordinates. And now we need to make a speed. So I'm going to right click again, type scalar parameter, I'm going to hit return. I'm going to call this speed. I'm going to type this value in as 0.05. I'm going to drag this into speed right here. So basically what we've done right now is we've created a texture object, which is this. It's just a texture and it's this smoky perlin noise right here. So something like that. And then we've plugged it into this four-way chaos. If I right click here and say start previewing node, I'm going to change this to a plane right here. And if I zoom in, I can see that there's already this sort of fog effect happening. So that's great. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to drag off here and I'm going to say cheap contrast. I'm going to drag off here, type scalar parameter, and I'm going to type contrast. I'm going to make this value one for now. I'm going to right click and say start previewing. 
And then now we can see that basically from here to here using this cheap contrast node, we've increased the black values in this grayscale mask. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to, we're gonna lerp, we're gonna linear interpolate between two colors that we select. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna type, uh, what is it? Constant three vector. I'm gonna right click here. I'm gonna say convert to parameter. We'll call this color underscore A. I'm gonna control C and control V. I'm gonna select the second one. And then I'm gonna change this A to a B. So now we have two color parameters. So right now they're both black. What I'm gonna do is under the default value over here, while A is selected, I'm gonna click this and it'll give me this little color picker. So in Dark Souls fashion, just so you know, it looks like the store. I'm gonna make this yellow. So I'm gonna go down here to a sort of orangey yellow. We can see it right here. And we'll be able to change these in just a little bit. And I'm gonna change this to maybe just a far more muted yellow, like this kind of color like that, you know. So this is the color scheme we're going for. And I'm going to click, uh, right click, and I'm going to type LERP. Uh, that is the short word for linear, interp linear interpolate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag off here from the A here into the B, and then I'm going to use the result of this contrast as the alpha. What this is going to do now is when I start previewing by right clicking, we can see that it is sort of switching between these two values. The white will translate as the lighter yellow and the black will translate as this darker value. So that is how we're gonna get our color. And we're not gonna drag this in just yet, but we're gonna create some other gameplay logic or some other material logic. So what we also need to do is opacity and we're gonna tie in these things in just a second. So what I wanna do is basically in the beginning, it's gonna be solid, in the middle, it's gonna sort of phase out using this fog map. And then in the end, what it's going to do is basically just go completely transparent. So instead of using a standard LERP, what we're gonna use is use a LERP three color. So I'm gonna type LERP, what is it? Linear interpolate, lerp underscore. Okay, lerp underscore three color. Always forget that one. Uh, and I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create three, uh, well, I'm gonna create two new values. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say constant three vector. What you can also do, shortcut is you press and hold three on the keyboard and then you left click. And so it basically just creates these. So I'm gonna start doing that from now on in this video. So the first one, is gonna be a white, and we'll make that in a second. So I'm gonna control C, control V down here. So I'm gonna select this first one. I'm gonna click over here under the constant value. I'm gonna change this value to white. I'm gonna drag in this RGB right here into the A. I'm gonna drag this into the C. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're gonna grab actually this cheap contrast I'm gonna control C and control V down here. I could also right click and type cheap contrast. So I'm gonna drag this in here. And the result of this is going to go in the B. What we're gonna do is we're going to pull off this contrast and we're going to type lerp. And we are going to lerp from zero to 10. So this is just gonna be a really high contrast value. And then what are we gonna use as our alpha? So our alpha is gonna be something that we are going to move from zero to one to push a series of values from our gameplay blueprint, which is gonna be our door. And you'll see how that comes together in just a little bit. So I'm gonna drag off here and I'm going to type scalar parameter and I will type lerp value. I'm calling this lerp value just because this is what I'm gonna push using logic in our blueprint. And basically from our blueprint, we're going to say, we're gonna run some logic that basically scales a number using a timeline. It's gonna push it to this material and we're gonna use this zero to one value in multiple places to change um, the, translucent the translucency, the glow, some other stuff. So I'm gonna start this and just for visual, we're gonna change this to 0.5 for now. We'll change this to zero by the end. So awesome. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to right click right here and we can see this is gonna be the mask that basically is um, 
allowing us to, to make this translucent. We'll see if I change the alert value to zero. It's gonna be completely solid. So one is gonna be solid. 0.5 is going to be partially um, partially masked. And then once we get to one, it's gonna be completely black. So I'm gonna pull off here and I'm going to type reroute. It's going to give me a named reroute declaration node. I'm gonna type opacity. And I'm gonna pull off here and I'm gonna type opacity. And so I have this reroute node. It's gonna be some more stuff in a second. So this is just a way that I can kind of keep this graph clean because I'm gonna add some other stuff right up here. So if I now change this value from zero, oh, let me actually grab this uh, alert value. So I'm gonna control C, control V, and I'm gonna drag this into here. So at zero, we can see that this is a completely solid object. At 0.5, we can see that it's starting to become masked. At 0.75, it's gonna be a little more translucent. We can see it's starting to fade to black. And then at one, we can see it's disappeared. So now let's add just a few more elements to our material logic.